2015 was a remarkable year for me. I realized that a sustainable future was possible. At that time, the Sustainable Development Goals by the United Nations had been issued. They had been constipated in a, in a long year process. Three years it took globally, multi-stakeholder um, process to really define those 17 goals, 169 sub-targets to make our world a better place, a peaceful place with clean air, clean water, healthy people, great cities that we want to live in, a good climate. I loved this vision and I thought it was a wonderful thing. At that time, I had been a sustainability consultant and a university lecturer at business schools for quite some years already. And I had the pleasure to work with people in companies, in corporations, but also with my students who really were ambitious and wanted to make the world a better place. So it was not so much the what any longer. And with this vision, we really had the picture already painted of a world that would be a better place for us, our children and our grandchildren to live in. But the question was, how can we do that? Because currently, and this was what is happening, and is happening still, unfortunately, we are living in a linear system, a system that we built after World War II to build up, to rebuild our then destroyed world and to grow and grow and grow and grow to this day. This is built upon it. So as a sustainability consultant with the people that I work with, I could only make things a little bit better here, a bit better there, along this linear chain of creating value. Being less bad doesn't make things really better and it doesn't really change the system and it doesn't really change us and our world the way we live in to this sustainable future. So at that point, it happened also in, at about the same time, um, I realized and, and found out um, in my researches that this system has been created by men, actually truly by men, not by women, but by men. Um, because I came across a group of people globally, and one of them I found a really um, um, startling um, quote that gave me the shivers, I have to say, when I read it. And I want to read it to you. Our enormously productive economy demands that we make consumption our way of life, that we convert the buying and using of goods into rituals, that we seek our spiritual satisfaction, our ego satisfaction in consumption. We need things consumed, burned up, worn out, replaced and discarded at an ever-increasing rate. Then it made me happy when I read this, because I realized this is a man-made system. This is not a God-given or nature-given economic system that we are operating in. It is actually something that men created. We created that. And it made me believe that if they could do that in post-World War times, we can recreate the system. We can rethink everything that we do, and we can create a new system. And that actually made me confident and really happy. And then something else came across. Economy needs to change. Yes, but how? Let's make it circular. How about a circular economy? Let's rethink all the linear processes that we have in place and rethink them into a circular, regenerative, mindset and really create processes that follow this mindset. That is seven years ago. Since then, circular economy had been a buzzword that, went, that got, has gone around the world. Um, I do hear and read and talk a lot about sustainable economies, about circularity, about regeneration. But what currently, seven years later, still is in place we take things, resources, we build them and make them, we use them, and at the end, we recycle. That's not enough. This is not a circular economy. This is not the transformation that we are looking for. This is not the change we want to see to be sustainable 
and create a sustainable world for our children and grandchildren. Why is this happening? Because system defines behavior. The structure of a system demands our behavior in it. And as long as the system is linear, we will behave in a linear way. We will only solve one problem after another. But we need multi-solving by now. We need to look into many issues, many crises at once. There is not the one crisis and then there is another one. There are many crises at the same time. And still, we need to live in it. We need to work in it. We need to create in it. And therefore, we need to change the way we build our, our lives and our economy. Let's make and use things not up, but use them and reuse them again and again and again. We need to keep materials and values that we have taken out of the planet. We need to keep them in a system for as long as we can. We need to keep them in our economy as long as we can before we discard them, before we make them waste. A natural system does not create waste. A natural system does only use whatever it needs and gives it back and then it grows again. And this is how we need to start to think about everything we do, we plan and we create here on this planet. So we need to reuse, repair, have things longer, at the longest amount of time we need then, if nothing works with repair any longer, we will need to bring them back into the system, have them refurbished, remanufactured. That is everything that needs to happen before we recycle and before we bring anything to waste. We need a circular transformation to achieve that. Because we need to transform. This is not a change event. This is not something that will have a beginning and an end. This is something that will take us some time. And this is why we need to start right away. We need to start with economy, but we also will need society because it is about the behavior of all of us, of each of us, um, that will define whether we will be successful or not. So there are seven things that I realized up to this day we still need to do to achieve this circular system, this circular change that we want to see. First of all, we need education. Education is crucial because for two generations we have taught everyone from little school children to university students linearity. This is what we were taught. This is what to this day my students are taught. We need to rethink education and the content of education because what we are doing right now is we are leaving or making our students go out of universities into businesses actually with a hammer and a nail and we ask them to build a spaceship. But that won't work. We already have the plan for the spaceship. We know that we need to build it, but we do not equip the people who have to build it, the next generations, with, the, with the, 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 the possibilities to even do that because they are not equipped with the right instruments. So this is really something that we need to change in education. We need creativity. We need creative hearts and minds and we've got so much creativity on this planet. Don't think about artificial intelligence. This is a tool, it will help us, but what we really need is human creativity. This is how we will make the machines rage and make the machines work for us. But, and they will, because digitization is a really good tool that will make us quicker and more circular um, on, on an industrial scale. But to rethink things, that, this, is our, this is our main task. We need creative minds to bring together hearts and minds of the people and bring everyone along with beautiful fun solutions with, 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 that look great, that feel great. This, and, and, and even in industries that never thought about that, technology needs creativity. Um, IT needs creativity. Engineering needs creativity. We, we really need to bring this into our lives much more. We need partnerships. This is not something that one of us or individuals or individual companies can do alone. 
they need partners. They need cross-industry, cross-sectoral partnerships, interdisciplinary exchange with others to create those ideas, to find out those new alliances that can create the new and that will make this change happen. This is really something that we need to do all together. Business and society, politics and business. Sectors that would have never thought about working together, please rethink everything because we need you and we need your partnerships. Investments, very, very important. We need those investments into the new, into the innovation. And not just technological innovation, we also need societal innovation. And we need financial flows and fi financiers, investors, that really go into sustainable circular investments. This is new and it may be a risk at once, but it's definitely a risk of ignoring if you don't do that, because this is the future. The future of economy is circular. There is no other future for economy. And so investment really needs to go along. We, we need that. This needs to be much more bold, and there have to be ways, and there will be ways, to finance and benefit from these investments for all of us. We need experiments. And we need financing those experiments. We have a failure culture that is currently a barrier to experiments. We don't have the solution ready yet. And we really need to walk in, work into our way. This may be an, an, a process that will take us two steps forward, one step back. But still, this is worth it. And those experiments, we need the room to create it. We need the space. We need the investments. We need to find ways and work our way into this new way of doing business, doing economy. We will not be free from mistakes, not be free from failure, but it's important that we start going and that we start doing it. Ambition is one of the main issues here. This is not going to happen just by letting it happen. This is not just happening because someone is giving us a political framework or regulations. This is not going to happen because some people really want it or work it. This is something that we all need to have ambitious goals to really do that. This is not a thing that is coming overnight. So we really need to hang in there. And this is why ambition is such a big, is such a big issue here. We need the boldness and dare to try things and to really set goals that are high and that we do not know yet how to achieve them, but we need to be sure that we want to achieve it. And last but not least, what we need is a narrative. And this is something that we are currently still lacking. We need the story that is told to each and every one and that everyone can understand, to cre that creates a picture in our minds, in our heads, that this circular future is something that we all benefit from. We will all benefit from the services that it provides without over-consuming, without consuming things up, but really using things and creating and giving back that value and living within planetary boundaries and having a good life for all of us without taking away the possibilities of next generations and the generations to come. So all of that is something that we already have we just need to do it. And I think the time is absolutely right and ripe to start building our circular future today. Thank you very much.